Greetings and welcome to the Battlefield 3 Dev Commentary. This run was made as part of a charity event to raise money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. It is provided free of advertisements and instead I would like to ask that if you enjoy this content, please consider leaving a small donation. You will find a link to the donation page on screen and in the video description. Enjoy! So, this is another map that's pretty interesting, it's called SP Bank, initially, for us, and it's a Operation Guillotine now, and it's one of those names that just come up afterwards. The Marines have Welker on their uniform. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> As far as our treatment of him goes, our directive... And it's again one of those, like, you make something up and you think, like, this will be awesome to make, and it's like, <laughs> it turns out that you have to actually ship it on a console and the rea reality of new tech and stuff, but yeah. Let's load in and I'll talk more about what's... Uh, what I mean here in a second. I'm gonna have to take a brief pause here in a second. A big city. Let's do that right now, actually, uh, to just get my chat windows back in, into place. There, now it should be okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, David had to leave. He didn't have time to stay for the full thing, but it was nice that he joined. It's a good, uh, good thing. Even if it's a painful memory, some of this game, like we worked extremely hard on this game of shipping it, and uh, we were not at all happy with the results in all all aspects. But it's still good to get to remember. So this is a big assault down to the city. He might be coming back. He didn't know. Uh, this is a big assault on the city, and there was supposed to be like this massive assault and this massive mortar attack that you run through and stuff. And then you're like, but yeah, but we can't have more than 20 AI soldiers at once. And it's like, oh, you're bound by all these restrictions. So this actually turned out to be a fairly difficult section to, to make of the game, just because you want that sense of scale and sense of, you know, stuff happening and chaos and everything around you. But yeah, then, uh, then you're bound and you have to do... So sort of smoke and mirrors a lot of it. Order up. Go, go, go. So just look at the screen and you just consider the fact that we can only have twenty soldiers at once, and that's a very hard maximum. We probably ended up with a lower limit. And there's probably twenty soldiers on the screen right now. And what this tells you is that at this moment there's not a single enemy in the game. There are really no enemies. So you're just running and it's all soldiers. And as you come down here, they're going to all be stripped away in favor of, you know, actual enemies. So... Can't answer that, I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean, the consoles are one thing, but also just, in general, the engine works the same way. Like, what happens when you move it onto PC is you scale it up, and that scale happens like on all fronts, so you end up with kind of the same limitations. Uh, but of course, like, shipping on PS3 and Xbox 360 had its limitations. And this conveniently placed wall lets us just forget about all the soldiers on the other side of this wall, which no longer exist, <laughs> and go into an actual combat scenario. So there's a lot of cheating like that, it's pretty funny. Imagine if PF3 was PC only, yeah, it was initially, like, there was a long and convoluted story behind PF3, but it was for a while developed to be PC only, and then uh, switched onto consoles when people started realizing that hey, maybe we need to make more money off of this than just the hardcore PC fans. Which is, you know, a reasonable reason to make a move. Sorry. That was an interesting thing, the friendly fire thing. 
at um, the uh, certification for shipping a game includes setting an H rating on it. And the H rating is very, very intolerant of accidental fire on teammates. So we had to implement this really harsh system to make sure that you didn't do that and actually fail you if you kept firing at them. And what we tried to do was make it so that it would you would have to be very you know, specific in doing it, you have to do it on purpose. But no, it turned out to be you know, sometimes it just triggers when you accidentally shoot them as they run past you. And they do run past you a fair bit. Nice. That was a bit of a glitch. That is a new glitch. I've never seen that before. Uh, another thing with this uh, whole new engine thing is that since we'd never shipped a game on that engine before, we didn't quite know what's the process for you know patching and how do we get new stuff into the game. And so with the patching of this game, we've actually probably like introduced a few glitches like that. What do I have? Questions. Did I play Venice Unleashed? I have not. And to answer that, that old question from the YouTube chat, yes, I'm looking at the chat, but it was off my screen for a while, so I missed it. Let's see here. Um, one other thing is when you want to make this like massive assault on somewhere, you tend to whoa whoa whoa. <laughs> that tends to happen. Is what I was gonna get to. You tend to like throw in lots of enemies, and of course when you throw in lots of enemies, the game gets incredibly difficult. And the idea was then, of course, to balance that out by having lots of friendlies there too. But really, like, it becomes really hard to balance that because you're trying to. Those were friendlies. <laughs> Um, let's see this. You're trying to, to sort of get this massive firefight, um, but you still have to have enemies that prioritize shooting at the player because otherwise, you know, it's not going to be any challenge and not going to be any fun. So yeah. Hard to see anything here. Run. So here's another one of those paid points where difficulty is generally good for normal in this game, but then as soon as you hit one of these points, it's just it's a spike in difficulty that is incredibly large. He's taking cover behind nothing. He's an enemy too, but I was friendly. Yeah, the patch thing is uh, a sad reality of consoles, I'm afraid. It is one one of the things that... Oh, come on. I don't know where he is because I can't see him. Um, patches on consoles are paid. So you have to pay to cert a patch. Which in some, some sense makes sense for like the system that they have. In some sense it doesn't. Um, so there was a lot of that back and forth. I think with the the stuff that we've been doing on B4 now, it's gotten a lot better. <laughs> Fail! Alright, he opens the door, comes out, f you know, fire. That was also very important. Oh, right, yeah, because Montes throws in a grenade. That's one of those very important things that turns out to be just a tiny little thing in terms of um, in, t in terms of actual gameplay value. So here's another of those funny things. Uh, this is just a little corner closet that you close, you breach here, and we actually close the door behind you. And this is just uh, to be able to sort of box you in and make sure that you 
keep moving in the... You can't go back, because then we can just get rid of everything. So there's a lot of the stuff that, as soon as you close, close a door, disappears on... Uh, how is this? There we go. Oh. Whoa! That's like 40k, right? I can't... Uh, I can't mention the, the, the numbers of that and I don't even have the exact numbers. So just know that it's... It's enough money that it, you don't want to release more patches than you have to. And it's just kind of prohibitive for patching a small thing like that. That's another, like, little event that is really kind of pointless. You, it doesn't lead to anything, it doesn't. It just opens a door with a weird animation. And you have to wait for them to catch up before you can actually open this. That is how patches tend to work, yes. We don't change game data, you change, you add a, a patch package on top that uh, sort of patches stuff in. So when the game goes to load data, it uh, will look, it will first load the thing, uh, the, the patch, and then whenever it starts to load anything else, it will check for that patch, that file existing in the patch, loading it from there. I know. I don't necessarily agree with the, the decision to not repatch the dark, but I, I, that's the reason for it. Here's another one of those fake things. There used to be a bunch of stuff here. We had to cut it down in order to be able to ship, and so uh, this this car ride was introduced to Sir, I'm wondering about take you through a tunnel, pretty much. And that during the tunnel, we're just going to skip you past all the stuff that we couldn't right make. I mean, that's all Badlands after the tunnel, sir. It's all Badlands after the tunnel. I need more drink. I'm getting pretty dry throat from talking all it. None of that makes any sense. Why don't we just shoot ourselves and save them the trouble? Seriously, we're gonna get jacked. Frankly, gentlemen, I'm not hearing the aggression I'd like. Keep scanning. Nothing yet. So, <laughs> this is the kind of thing you would try to avoid normally as a game dev. You're just going past lots and lots of expensive geometry. You're like, you're making a lot of stuff and then you're just traveling past it really quickly. Um, so that's, yeah. Get this over with. Yep, more ILP coming up. Yeah, here's another big set piece event. Or big. Well, it's a set piece event. And this is another one of those. You go like, oh, wow, that's a big scream. Um, all of these have to be sort of timed so that they can't break if you're not in the right position and stuff. So that's a part of why this game is linear in the way it is. Is that. All of these big events that we really wanted to have is like they have to take you into a certain location, and that location is very specific. Here we're coming up to the uh, situation where somebody mentioned earlier, and I'm not sure if that was actually the thing that they they meant, but but yeah, this next door passage I think we're going through is uh, that if one that had a bug. I don't know if that bug was ever fixed or if it's still in the game, but they would pretty much just go out the door and then leave it, leave you behind. It also depends on what 
No, they stopped here. Uh, so when we shipped the game, there was some problem which led to this section uh, being completely hung, so you couldn't go through this door. And in the bug fix for us, it happened really late, just like a few days before we shipped off to uh, to print the discs, pretty much. Then I fixed this a problem. Uh, I fixed the the hang, but also introduced a new problem where the your squad mates would just run straight through the door and out, and then a little while later they would come back and actually open the door for you. So you stand out and wait for them after they ran through. That was pretty funny. Somebody linked something in, uh, in the Twitch chat. That might be it. That's crap. Friendly fire, a warning on grenades is about the most annoying thing ever. I'm not really happy about any part of that system. Uh, this calming section was a f an interesting one. There's a whole. Oh, yeah. Stay down. Uh, this whole section was like you have to run from this tank, and there's supposed to be this thing, and it really was not working. Like it was not working at all. So it was one of those another section that really, really late. Uh, it's been like put off for so long, and we can't do anything about it because we're tied into all these other bugs and problems with the game, and this thing just didn't work. It was. It was a terrible section of gameplay, and so the night before we were like, "You cannot change any more design on this in this game." Um, after today, pretty much when we come in tomorrow, you cannot change any more design on this game. Uh, so we're like, "Okay, I have to deal with this section. This is not good enough." So I basically took this section, uh, ripped out all the logic from it, and started from scratch. And it's one of the like. How do we ever manage to ship a game like that? But um, so it's pretty much one attempt to get something good out of this, and the part I'm playing right now is uh, that the result of that. So it's like it's well one shot. You got one attempt to make good gameplay. Normally you like make something over many, many, many attempts and iterations and refinements. You just made this once, and it turned out okay. And yeah, here's a very clear, um, you can very clearly see the stuff that Dave was talking about before, where you're shooting at people really far away in fog all the time, and it doesn't really cater for the best gameplay. And then we're coming up to the fi final part here with the tank, and you have to get running, and you have to run down here. So now we're coming into the part of this, where the na level goddess name is called SP Bank. I'm good. <coughs> and then we're coming out onto the actual bank good. section here in a bit. Good. Uh, well, fucker, that was a How does scripting work in Frosted? Is it graph based? It is a visual scripting language called Schematics, and it's graph based. It's kind of nodes and events and properties and all kinds of stuff. It's uh, probably one of the most complex ones of those kind of graph based languages that there are. It has a lot of quirks and weirdnesses in it, but also. Lead to some of these problems, but it's uh, when we got it for it was the first time we used it was for this project. It was a different one in BC and BC2. So when we got it, it enabled a lot of the the stuff that is better in whoa, <laughs> the stuff that is better in BF3 than in BC2. Um, that is due to the fact that we could make more of that kind of stuff. And there's we go. We gotta fight the tank. How messy does the graph get? Um, incredibly messy in some cases. Um, the uh, jet mission was terrible. It was an absolute pain made of spaghetti in terms of graphing. Uh, some others were pretty good. The earthquake missions were, were pretty good, with the exception of. Uh, 
the actual earthquake event, which was just a terrible, terrible, like one big graph of connections for the entire earthquake, with each separate piece of mesh connected in that. Whoops! In that event, you see like a lot of small pieces of ground that um, all like shift and heave in that event, and that every single piece like that had a single line connected to an animation so that thing is just a massive mess of lines here it is we appear to have lost the mesh but it doesn't matter this is another one of those sections like this is not fun let's remake it um not quite as late but it was uh <laughs> late enough and i just took the section out of the hands of the people who made it and remade it. It's not like people weren't uh, weren't capable of doing it. It was just that the complexities of making this project in this new engine is made se some of the sections I just had to redo. It's a cleaning way to do the earthquake, yeah, but you're bound to the engine that you use. Whoa. Uh, move. Let's see. go so keyframes of the free like the, the thing is you're bound to the engine you have and a lot of the stuff is like surely we can do that that's yes you could do that but you're talking about like one thing in a big game of things you have to prioritize things uh, that actually makes sense. Is that? That's a tank. Did that fire? Let, let me pass, sir. Uh, this could be a problem. You see, these uh, tanks fire pretty regularly, and they will they act on your being in cover or not. And so, some of them are really difficult to take out because they can. Like, if you accidentally snag on something, you'll get shot. Uh, why is the little bird left in the world? Um, so part of this is, uh, the way we streamed, uh, data from disk in, in the, this game pretty much was that, um, when there was logic connected to something, it had, the, the world parts around that had to be streamed in. So if you wanted something to work, like you want the little bird to keep flying away, then you have to keep that thing in... You have to keep the whole area in memory. So that's what happened. And uh, that's something we changed afterwards uh, for PS4 and stuff, but uh, that's how it worked then. And that meant that there were some oddities, like if there was a vehicle around that we used, and you could see it from a bit longer distance, that the whole geometry had to stay, and the opposite also applied that if you had something where this area can be seen and you had a bit of logic connected to that so for instance a little bird then that little bird would also remain spawned in and around because well the area was still visible Right, so we're heading in the back way of of the bank now to another one of those nice little scenes. Paddle recorder for BF5, please. Well, I am not on the project. I take I take no responsibility for the being or not being of a battle recorder. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are a lot of things like that that happen in games, like you, you wonder why is this even here? And it's usually for some really obscure technical reason. Nice face. This again is like one of those, we needed a kind of one-way drop so we can get rid of all the stuff behind it, so we can start loading the scene that happens next. Because since our stuff was based on visibility, it's like, now I can't see back there anymore, so we can get rid of all the tanks and tank wreck meshes and all that kind of stuff. 
and just start loading the next scene up here. Because those the scenes are animations are generally very expensive in terms of memory. Hey. We got a cat coughing here. Custom ladder climbing, because of course. And in we go. I'm in. Yep, you're in. And another custom animation for that. So here's the thing: like the the way that I think, if you can uh, describe, oh, stall. Uh, there's another one of those scenes, by the way. This kind of it's just more violent than it needs to be. <laughs> so you're just basically like. And I know, I think this is one of the ones that uh, that's one of my co-workers was working on. He was like really disturbed by playing this over and over. Uh, I had the, un the the misfortune of playing another one. Is it true that you can heal destruction by playing negative damage? I am not entirely sure. Uh, the way the system, like it's changed too. It's changed a lot between... There we go. Uh, custom knifing animation, because why not? Uh, it's changed a bunch before between the projects, but the way it is, it, you can't sort of undo the fact that there are parts of it that scatter around the world and the smoke effects and stuff that go off, but you can generally, I believe, heal to... So objects in Frostbite have what's called damage uh, states. And they will, they will sort of be destroyed down to a certain damage state, or parts of objects will be. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Hard to focus on a difficult section while talking, but yeah, they, they go to a damage state, and in that damage state you just look a certain way. Uh, and going to that damage state also spawns like the wreck parts that fall on the ground, and that's all the like... Um, effects of that happening, but uh, once they're there, they're just a different mesh. So there's nothing that really limits you from moving back to another state afterwards. Uh, I don't know if that's hooked up to negative damage dealing by the like the gameplay systems, but that's how the sort of the object systems work, if you will. This is another one of those a bit more difficult sections. I didn't quite remember what's the best way of solving this one was. It might have been that this glass was actually a pretty good cover. There are also a fair few sections that I don't like uh, in this game that are implemented as sort of enemies that will keep coming until you hit a certain line and then they stop and stuff like that. Uh, can I get cover somewhere here? This very, very sturdy looking armchair will do. <laughs> the oversized ammo boxes are pretty funny, yeah. They they were they suffer from a very common thing in games where you just have to um you have they have to be objects you can see. So you just go with it. There used to be a sniper rifle around here somewhere. It's probably like one of the hidden weapons. Can't remember remember where it was. Uh, is the smoke kept from Sava? Uh, some of it might be. Generally, what we do is uh, those guys do our mocap. That is kind of action mocap and the the kind of. The smaller stuff that isn't big scene. Is it a different object or just the same rescaled? I don't know what the technical 
implementation of that is, but it is essentially the same object uh, that has been like rescaled. If that meant that they made another object by importing it into the engine, rescaled, or if it's just like, yeah, it's an, it's just the same object but we scaled it in the engine, I don't know. We've had problems with scaling objects before. It's very sturdy glass on those. Yeah, it might be this, the thing. The, the, the let's see. The the, the thing I can't um, answer is whether it's been rescaled by the engine or by a separate tool. They all turn up there very quickly. Good timing. Let's keep moving. All right. Are there shadow casting point lights in Frostbite? Uh, Spotlight. I'm pretty sure there is, but I'm also not the person to answer that. Because I'm not an artist. I worked with a lot of good technical artists that Gentlemen, let me not care about that stuff. Of Al -Bashir. Find it, bag it. You guys, clear the basement. We'll sweep the rest of the building. Roger. Blackburn, come on. It's kind of funny that guy is like an actual character. We like made a character. Uh, a specific head for him, and he has this voice actor and stuff, and he turned out really good. So, it's hard to know that stuff in advance, and uh, a lot of us were just really sad that he... He ended up really good, got a good attitude and a nice, like, good-looking mesh, and then we only used him for that one place. Or, like, two places, but yeah. Oh, and this place. Okay. Hi, Garrett. Check. Welcome. Looks about sixty feet down. Slow and quiet. Pay out your rope. Careful. Mission impossible. It is. <laughs> there have been some pretty awesome bugs for this game and with the other games. That is true. Here's another like custom thing where you, I don't know. I think there was a lot of. A lot of attention and uh, work put into these when we made the game. Um, and they are really high fidelity and stuff. I, I'm just not so sure they add so much to the game. And if you count up the like the cost of making all of these custom things for one place in the game, like imagine um, a more gameplay-driven game, then you would probably make that by simply you know, making the same amount of stuff but make it in a generic way so you can use it all across the game and then you have yourself a, like a game making toolbox and that's that's the difference and that I think when we were talking about that me and Dave that's kind of where this game is from like we made a very very specific game and a very very specific set of things that you could do in one place of the game but it was yeah it was only used once so it, it turned out very very expensive uh, this this I love this scene uh, if you if you played bad company 2 you know the end scene of that when you're fighting in an airplane and the, the, the stuffing into the chairs it just flies all over the place this is kind of the same it was the target of this was to get the same kind of feeling where you're fighting through a room full of boxes of paper right because it's a bag and well and Whenever one of those boxes is hit, it just you know, disintegrates and there's paper and stuff flying everywhere. It's really cool. Oops. Too soon. <laughs> Alright, done. Get it on. Should have seen the internal blooper reels we got from Fun Bugs. <laughs> CJ there, yeah. Um, we have some pretty epic bugs, bug rolls at sometimes, and it is a, it is sad that we don't get them out more often. Uh, but yeah. See, maybe Al Bashir's in there. I don't know. Let's find out. Smackovich, <laughs> open the gate. Open it. With your, of course, it's done by explosives. What is 
Smell that? Smoke. Cordite. Let's get this door open. Hey, battleship. God damn it, Timmy. Yeah. I'm going in. So, how big problems are you guys having? With the video quality, is what I'm saying. There. Holy shit. It's a gold mine. It's an operations room. Looks like they tried to destroy it. No, look. Shit's still here. It's fine. Good. Okay. Uh -huh. Good. Um, here's pretty much where you get the kind of uh, the reveal of what the game is actually about <laughs> at this point. Actually, the uh, you've been tracking down this Al Bashigi guy, and it's like what's what's actually going on, and why is that a problem? And now we're, we're revealing the contents of this box, which is why is this a big problem, and why are you so caring so much about this? Holy shit. You know what that is? Russian. Portable nukes. There's only one there. Wait, there's room for two more. Where the hell are the other two? Hey, you need to see this! There! Shit! That's Al Bashir. Who's the other guy? I don't know. They're coming down. We need to secure the nuke and get the hell out of here. What about the intel? No, no, there's no time. Let's get the nuke and move. Now this whole building's gonna come down. This is Misfit 1-3. Misfit, this is actual sound. Misfit, we have secured what appears to be a WMD. Break? There may be more than one. Misfit 1-3, you're breaking up. Are you reporting WMD? Say again. God damn it, Solomon, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry about this breaking up, I don't know. Uh, can't be good. comment on YouTube says video quality is fine, so if it doesn't fix itself, you could try heading over there. Um, yeah. Let me know, though, if it keeps keeps dropping. The, uh, cutscenes in, the uh, BF3 were all, like, with the exception of the, uh, interrogation scenes that are at the beginning of the levels, the cutscenes are all in first person, and that's just, like, very, very... Uh, conscious and thought out choice to have cutscenes keep you in character at all times. So, I actually think that since it's been used so consequently across the entire game, it's it's pretty it's pretty good. It turns out that the result of that is pretty good. Uh, now this is what we call SP Paris comrades. Uh, it was the one that uh, David was referring to before. Uh, DMS mission. Um, it turned out really good. Uh, I know a lot of people like this. <laughs> needed more baguettes. Yeah, it might have needed more baguettes. I don't know. Um, but it doesn't contain. I, I can get to that when we when we get there. Uh, it has a few interesting things, a few interesting targets uh, when you're trying to make a game that are like things that uh, that pop up in game after game, and you always try to make them, and you always fail. So it's the, the holy grail of, of game making, and I've, I've heard them, in, and to the point where you start going like, "Oh, not this again! You're not gonna, you're not gonna do it." This, however, does pretty much look uh, like the game is stalled. Hello. Loading the loading text is usually animated, even if the rest of the the thing is a static loading screen. It's kind of funny. A lot of the loading bleeps and stuff uh, that we have in when you're not on the loading screen, but when it's just on black, are actually added in uh, as a safeguard. So there will be a little blip blipping about whenever the screen is completely black, just to avoid ever getting stuck in a completely black screen and showing no interaction and which would actually fail your win certification too if you tried it. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm going to have to restart the executable here. Let me see. That is unfortunate. 
Uh, let's take a moment to check out another donation then. Uh, ten dollar, ten dollar donation from uh, uh, Battle Chef. Thank you very much, and the, with the message, uh, good luck on your stream. Why, well, thank you. I appear to need it. And we're gonna try to get this rolling again. <laughs> Sorry about this brief interruption. Um, where do I have my things? Launch the dev version. I don't have a dev version, I'm afraid. I'm playing this at home on the, a non-company computer that uh, has no secrets in it. <laughs> at least none of uh, DICE's secrets. Uh, I don't think it's possible that if we don't even have like a dev version that works anymore. Um, nobody's actually like building on BF3. So yeah. Let's see there. Uh, let's see if we're back and rolling. That looks okay. Bad part is that says Operation Guillotine, which is the one we just did, so it it didn't save the new mission. So we might have to watch that cutscene again. It should save before the cutscene, so we shouldn't have to do the final fight again. I hope. The well, where are we? Yeah. Uh, the uh, the rules that we laid out for the designers of making this stuff is saved before and after every cutscene. But since this one ended the mission, probably didn't. I didn't have a save afterwards. Uh, the save is supposed to be at the beginning of the next mission, but since it didn't really load, then we never got a uh, save there. So I hope it works this time, otherwise we'll get stuck here. Also, by the way, there's nothing. If that doesn't actually Where? hurt you, you could pretty much just stand right on it. What the fuck is this? Would it be too okay. much work to redo Battlefield 3 MP from next gen? Um Smoke. Corda. Let's get this door open. We uh like since we have the the data, I mean it's not gonna be it wouldn't be hard at all to just get the level rolling on the next gen. But then the question of how do you get something to be next gen is a more interesting question. Like, what does it take to make a level Holy appear shit. to be Goldmine. the current generation of consoles? Like, what does it take to make it's it look good control. enough? And what more so stuff do you want to have it. to play? Shit's still here. Um, I want bagged and tagged. Uh -huh. oh, like, do you want levolution events for the them? What's you supposed to be happening with the lighting? Do we want, you know, all that kind of stuff? Holy shit! Come over here. Right, we have to interact. Lift the lid again. Uh, Radioactive. More polygons. Is that a good idea? <coughs> yeah. And some of the textures and stuff we have in higher resolution because, like, they're used higher on PC, and some are just made higher and then scaled down because they didn't fit in memory or whatever. So those you can always use as a upscaled version. But there's room for two more. Where the hell are the other two? It tends to be a fairly expensive hey, to thing to you know, upscale stuff to be there. on new consoles. Shit! That's Al Bashir. Who's the other guy? I don't know. They're coming down. We need to secure the nuke and get the hell out of here. What about the intel? No, no. There's no time. Let's get the nuke and move. Yeah, it's I'm just reading down. through chat here. Um, this is Misfit One Three. Misfit, this is actual sound. I actually do appreciate Levolution, though I don't appreciate the word Levolution. I appreciate the the concept of having like a larger scale event happening in multiplayer where it actually affects the level is I think a really good one. Oh, that can uh, be good. And I can uh, I can honestly say that because I was I didn't have any part of that. <laughs> I I was called in to help out implementing it uh after it was actually started, but I haven't, you know, I wasn't a part of taking that decision or anything. Let's hope that we can load into comrades now. <laughs>